Hi, okay, welcome back. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. Today we're looking at section 3.2, headed Special Uses of the Genitive and Dative. Now, in this uh, section, Duff highlights uh, something which sometimes causes a bit of confusion for students. You have seen so far that a case is like a little label attached to a word which tells you what the word is doing in a sentence. And the accusative case is like a little label which tells you that a particular word is the object of a verb. So if you want to say, for example, I speak a word, well, a word, if you're going to translate that into Greek, is going to have to go in the accusative case because a word is the object of what I'm speaking. That makes perfect sense. Now, what Duff points out here is that some verbs actually put their objects in a different case. Now, there are reasons for this, and we could explain some of the reasons, but I don't think it's necessary to do that in order to make sense of it here. Just um, take a look at the examples that he gives. I want to run through them very briefly, then spend a moment or two more on this verb, akuo, just to explain what's going on. Um, the first one the highlights is the verb lego. I speak a word to the master is the example he gives. Well, it's easy to see why the phrase to the master would go in the dative case rather than the accusative case because in English it's got the word to in front of it and therefore of course as Duff points out in his book it's going to be to curio rather than ton curion because in English you'd use to to highlight that this is the person you're speaking to rather than the thing that you're actually saying to them. The second example he gives is the verb pistuo, I believe. The object of pistuo goes in the dative case. For now, I suggest you just remember that. Don't try and think about it or rationalise it too much. There is a rationalisation for it, but we don't need to worry about it here. The one I want to help you with is the one that causes most confusion because it just seems arbitrary. And it's the verb akuo, meaning I hear. Now, Duff points out the verb akuo takes two objects, the person heard and the thing heard. And you could just try and remember it like this, um, the accusative of the thing heard or the genitive of the person heard. So for example, if you want to say, I hear the word, well, the thing heard goes in the accusative, I hear the word, that's a thing that you're hearing, and therefore ton logon in the accusative. What Duff then points out is that the person heard goes not in the accusative, but in the genitive. And that feels like a bit of a nightmare. Like, why, why can't you just put them both in the accusative and have done with it? Well, there's actually an interesting reason for this. Suppose I want to say, I hear the Lord. That's not the thing heard. That's the person heard. Okay, so I'm going to put to curio genitive, hot on to, nominative accusative genitive, curios, curion, curio. Make that a bit more obviously an upsilon. The person heard goes in the genitive. Now, why would this make sense? Here's the simple way to make sense of it and also to remember which one goes in which case. Imagine that you use them both. Imagine that you use them both. I hear the word of the Lord. So instead of just saying, I hear the word or I hear the Lord, imagine you're saying, I hear the word of the Lord. In that instance, then of course, the person heard would have to go in the genitive because you're saying of the Lord in the complete sentence. So I hear the word of the Lord is how you'd say it if you were saying both, Tom Logon and to Kuryu. The way to remember what you do when you use them individually is simply to remember that you retain these cases from the complete sentence, even when you miss one of them out. So if instead of saying, I hear the word of the Lord, you just want to say, I hear the Lord, you get rid of that, you keep this guy in the genitive. 
By contrast, if you just want to say, I hear the word, omitting that, then you keep this guy in the accusative. That at least helps you first to remember it's accusative of thing heard and genitive of person heard and not accusative person genitive thing. It helps you to remember it. And secondly, it provides a kind of rationale which makes sense of why you'd want to do this because then when you use them both, you can distinguish what is the thing that's being said, the logon, the word, and what is the person who's saying it. Okay, well hopefully that's helped you just to sort out a few of those bits and pieces in section 3.2. Uh, remember what I've um, said a few times before, uh, to keep working at this, uh, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, it is much better if you're feeling completely exhausted on you know, Thursday evening and you haven't done your Greek that day, it is much better just to squeeze out those 20 minutes and get something done that day rather than to build up this great mountain of pressure for you to do double time on Friday or just to fall behind and never get going again and then give up. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, and we will have you reading the Greek New Testament in a year or two with no trouble at all. Keep working hard, keep making progress through the examples. The next thing to have a look at is practice 3.2, and we'll be back next time. I'll go through one or two of these practices, and then we'll carry on um, with the other examples in this chapter. All right, God bless. Keep working hard. See you next time.